All right, so we have Coach Tyson here today, and he's going to take us through some great extra stretching exercises for when our runs are done. So I'll let uh, Coach Tyson tell a little bit about it. We're going to show you some visuals, and he's going to explain how you would do use these stretches in your own routines. So, Coach Tyson, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Nate. Uh, it's and I want to welcome the campers uh, to this session. Um, one of the things in life as a runner, they always say little things make big things happen. It's not just about running. It's, it's also about how you're eating, how you're doing your core, how you're doing your stretching. And, and this is a session on stretching. Um, and I think you'll like this routine. This is a routine I learned while I was at Bill Dillinger's Oregon track camp a bunch of years ago. Took it back to my team. I actually videotaped the athletes doing these things that we're going to look at today and do. And then uh, uh, they just mimicked it and it became part of our culture. We always did this routine Monday through Friday after our workout. It would be like the closing part of our workout. We would do some core, we would do some stretching, and we'd be doing some killer, killer push ups. We call them S, stretching, G, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, guts, and then uh, P, the push-ups, SGPs. So we're going to do uh, the S's today. This gives you a little idea of, of some of the history of these stretches. Uh, I, I shared it with a lot of teams. Uh, this particular intro here uh, was, was a runner at, at Jackson High School over uh, north of Seattle, Washington, uh, who actually took what I taught him, and he used it as a senior project. He used it for... Uh, created his own little journal uh, at, we, with all the workouts of, of the week or the, the month and the year. And then he, he kind of put some of, of this together. So a lot of what you're going to see here is from my book uh, via this other young man from Jackson High School. So let's go ahead and look at that first slide, our first exercise. So this is uh, our first one. You can take a look at the, at the position here. Uh, uh, this particular stretch. Uh, the positions you see slide one there, just, you know, you're on your knees, your legs uh, back, you're going to feel that in your ankles, your ankles are going to hurt a little bit because you're not, you know, you're not quite ready for this yet. So you want to do all these exercises gently to start with. Um, and if you notice, uh, here we got we're sitting on our knees, which can be also a little painful when you're not used to it. So you want to do this ideally on grass, maybe put a towel out. If the weather's good, uh, do it on grass with the towel. Uh, this is the way we do it at camp. Uh, hard floors are not great. If you've got a mat and you do it indoors, that works. Uh, but you're putting your hands on your hips, keeping your toes, toes pointed, and the soles of your feet are, are flat, okay? And then the second slide, uh, you can see what's happened here. We've gone down, everything's square, and you look at the feet. Uh, they are flat, and that's an interesting angle in itself because a lot of you aren't very flexible. There's an old slogan, strong feet, less injuries. So this drill also helps keep your feet a little stronger. So hands on hips, and then you go up, like slide one, and you go down into slide two. Uh, but if you have knee problems, you notice that a bullet point uh, four there, uh, not a good one to do. If you have knee problems, uh, let's, let's assess it before you make that decision to do that. Um, and now we'll go on to our next slide. So uh, this is a, our next stretch. You're going right from that first exercise into uh, stretching the hamstring, the calves, and the Achilles. These are all uh, areas of your body that are, are, are relating to running. So everything we're doing here in this little stretching drill today uh, is really, really relative to your body and, when you're, and all the tendons and ligaments and everything that you're using when you're running. So it's, this is very applicable. It, it really fits in well. And here's our, here's our bullets. From a push-up position, down below, slide two here, uh, you'll see you bring your hands slowly closer to, 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 to your feet when you go to that uh, first slide, hands flat. I could, uh, and then what he's going to do is he's going to push back into slide two. Slide the feet back, arch your back, arms straight. Here's another thing that's happening. 
if you have weak arms, uh, you know, it's going to show. So this is a good exercise to do some, uh, some uh, 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 you're doing some upper body sprint work too. Uh, so bring him slowly, slowly closer to keep your uh, legs straight. This should form a triangle, also called a mountain pose. And you see that mountain pose there, heads up, eyes straight in, in, in slide two. Try to keep your heels on the ground with hands flat. I, that's probably one of the things a lot of uh, people when they're doing this drill don't do. They kind of put their knuckles down and we want our hands flat, okay? So let's hold this for 30 to 40 seconds. And then you just, then you just slide back up into that slide position number one again. And then work your back down and uh, work, work yourself back again. Um, and you can see that in the reverse, you're live face down on your stomach, with hands lined up to your shoulders, raise your chest, head towards forming an arch in the lower back. That's slide two. Again, hold for 30 to 40 seconds, and then switch back to, to the mountain pose that you have in that first slide. Kind of cool to see these graphics of what actually is happening too, to, your, to, your, uh, to all your uh, tendons and, and muscles that you see. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Real quick, Coach Tyson, on, on, on ones like this, what if you can't do it? Like, what if I, like, I couldn't keep my heels on the ground with my hands flat? Oh, yeah. How, how could I adjust that so I could still get the proper stretch but not hurt myself, too? Yeah, that's a really good question, Nate. Uh, let's, you know, just assume that, you know, that this is a, you're a rookie and, and, you know, like, man, your flexibility is, you, you know, you're going from ground zero. And so, you know, like, like even when you're doing push-ups, sometimes when I have rookies doing push-ups, I don't have them, maybe they're having their knees on the ground. And then they do, do push-ups with their knees on the ground. What the heck? And then they graduate to the next level and they graduate to the next level. So with these, maybe we don't do it perfect, perfect form, or let's take, let's do another, maybe it's less seconds, the 30 to 40 seconds might be way too much. Maybe we attempt to get in that position for five seconds. So let's kind of play with this. I know at camp in the past, uh, not everybody looked perfect, uh, but when they were done with the last drill, they said, man, do I feel more, I feel looser. And one of our goals here is to certainly get you feeling looser, but it's also to get you to uh, have better flexibility. Hopefully that makes your form better, more efficient, and hopefully it also helps prevent injuries. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's kind of lower the seconds, maybe when you, if it's hard for you, three or four, five seconds versus 30 to 40, um, and don't freak out about that. Uh, or maybe we have to adjust it. Maybe, you're, maybe we start with our knuckles down and our hands not flat. And maybe our legs, and the, as we go down and create that arch, maybe the arch isn't quite that arc yet. Because um, we don't want to get hit. We certainly don't want to get hurt stretching, right? Right. Okay, thanks. So here we go at stretch three. This will stretch the hips and the groin. And man, this is a great one. It, it also uh, it stretches your hamstrings. Um, pretty simple there. Again, in the perfect world, we like to have our hands flat up front and that back leg nice and straight. Uh, even in this picture, this pose, I might even have the head up a little bit. This head is just kind of down, the eyes are down. I might have my eyes going straight out in front of me. So lay down on stomach with your hands next to your shoulders. Bring one leg up towards your chest while raising your body from the foot, excuse me, from the floor, making a 90 degree angle like you have here with the knee. Take the other leg back until it's straight with toes holding the leg up, okay? This is the perfect position. Again, you might have to graduate to this. Try to bring your bottom as close to the ground as possible. In other words, your, all that midsection of your body, try to bring it as low. And you, one of the ways of doing that is just bring that uh, back leg, make it as straight as possible, and, and that can bring that down. Um, again, our, 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 our goal is holding it for 30 to 40 seconds, but hey, you know, let's graduate to that. Let's go five to 10 seconds for those of you that are struggling a little bit. Next slide. What's really cool about what we're doing here now is that everything has a flow to it. We, we start with that one first stretch and we were not, everything kind of like flows. You don't have to change your position. You don't have to like stand up or 
sit down and totally radically move into a different position. You're flowing uh, and it's, it's really got a nice flow to it. So this is called the lunge. Uh, uh, increases the stretch of the two arm lunge working specifically the hips and the groin is what it said above, above there. So how do you perform this stretch? Lay on your stomach, place your hands next to your shoulders, raise, uh, raise one leg up to your chest, making it 49, 40, it's gonna be a, a 90 degree angle and you can see that there. Take the other leg back until it is straight with your toe holding it up. Take the arm that is the outside of the 90 degree angle and bring it under the knee, grabbing the opposite side. I don't know if you can see that there, but you're taking your, uh, your arm and putting it under your knee and uh, kind of, it's for bracing purposes because then you can hold that position better. So really what you've done here, the, the previous stretch, you're graduating to a little more, it's the same stretch, but a little more intensity, a little more, because you, you kind of warmed it up. And now this one's just another degree of intensity with that same uh, stretch, the previous stretch. Hold this again for 30 to 40 seconds. Try to keep your head up, back leg straight, stay loose, stay relaxed. Again, uh, if you want to graduate up, you can start with five to 10 seconds, whatever. And uh, remember, our goal here is to do all these, get to the point where you can do this five days a week, after at the end of your running portion of your practice, kind of when your coach is maybe reviewing over the plan of action for uh, a competition or or what's going to go on tomorrow uh, while you're stretching. Next slide. This is a glute glute and hip. It's probably one of the favorite stretches of runners. It's really really a good stretch to help the IT band, which is a uh, a common area of injury for distance runners. Uh, it's the piriformis. You may not know what that's all about, but there's a there's a muscle in there, and you can all the biology uh, of and, and the anatomy is up above to show you what this is. But don't worry too much about it. But those, these are areas of distance runner injuries that are common, and this stretch is really really good to help prevent that. So we're we're, we're starting uh, with one leg straight back. You see that first slide. Take the other leg and bend it uh, under the trunk of your body. I hope you can see that there. Um, and place the toes as far back as you can toward the center of your body. Keep your knees, ankles, shins, and toes all on the ground. Place your hands flat on the, on the ground also. That should be pretty easy, to be honest with you. And lock your elbows straight to receive max stretch. Pretty... Uh, Pretty easy to see there in that picture. Try to get into that. What I would do, uh, athletes, is kind of look at uh, look at the picture, mimic it, and study it, and then make this a habit. Okay. So let's go to the next slide because it's a continuation of this. Uh, and now what you're going to do is you're going to be doing push-ups with this drill. Uh, start by performing the same position as we just did on the previous slide. It's, but this time we're gonna uh, we're gonna go we're gonna do uh, we're gonna just go down like a push up, and then back up, and then down like a push up. And you can see that in the progression of each of these slides. Second slide down a little bit. Uh, it looks like the third slide near the ground, and there you are. That's where you want to be on the on the as you uh, are 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 uh, in a, a flat 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 position on the grass or on your mat. I might add, what you're doing here, again, is you, I'm gonna read through the bullets because this is what you, how you're gonna do it. Start by performing the same position as the leg under your upright stretch. Okay, and you see that there in the first slide. Then with your hands and back, slowly lower your body so face is near the ground. I can't, I tell, you, I tell everybody, uh, I'm, not tr I'm not trying to joke too much here, but put your face into the ground, Hopefully there wasn't a foo-foo dog that walked by earlier. Of course, everybody loves that, that thrill. Uh, and then you just kind of go up and down 10 times like a push-up and then up and down real easy, not super fast, up and down like, like push-ups. But on, at the end of the 10th one, 
then you're in that flat, flat, a uh, slide four position. Okay. And then you hold that for, oh, 10 or 15 or 20 seconds. Again, if you're progressing through this, you might start by doing five of the push ups of the slow, of the very slow uh, ups and downs before you get into the flat, flat, flat position there. Again, this is great for the hammy, great for the piriformis, great for uh, loosening up the midsection of, of, of your, your anatomy, of your, where your uh, lower leg attaches uh, up above to your midsection of your body. Okay, let's go check out the next slide. Okay, this, now we're gonna just kind of like, you know, move around a little bit and position yourself in this particular glute stretch. I think you just about all of you guys have done this one before. Our slides give pretty darn good form. The position would be everything square. Uh, our bullets show you those points, sitting on the floor with both legs extended out in front. Bring one leg over, slide heel along the side of the outside of the other leg towards the bottom. Keep your knee upright. And you want to look the opposite way of your elbow that's on the left side here. You want to look to the right, okay? Um, hug the knee that is upright with both arms. You see that in the slide? And bring the opposite elbow on the outside of the up, upright knee. Turn it back the same direction with head looking, like I said, uh, the opposite direction. Okay? And again, that's, you know, we might do two or three sets of that one. And then we move on to our next stretch. I'd say the one thing here, uh, Coach, is that part where it says bringing the other leg towards the bottom. I think a lot of athletes do this with that other leg straight out, the one that's not close to their body. And that's, oh, that's, a, really, that's a good point. That's yeah. a little difference here uh, that I think is important to get the proper stretch in. Thank you, Nate, for uh, catching that too. And then we just flow right into uh, the groin stretch area. And this one is uh, even hard for me. You don't want to like get too radical with this and get to the point where you like are like a gymnast if you're not a gymnast. <laughs> you could actually strain your groin by trying to do this too intensely if you're uh, have never done it for before, okay? So let's just kind of gently, it doesn't even, your knees don't have to go all the way down to the floor. But you notice your elbows are on the knees and they, they can kind of put pressure on the knees to bring your legs, you know, from the butterfly position all the way down. Even this slide, the second slide here, is not all the way down. Um, and there are those that are like flexibility kings or queens that, are way beyond me, you know, and uh, and I'm trying to stereotype, but uh, young ladies are really good at this. Uh, young men generally not. So, you know, you, you you can quote me on that, and then when we go to camp next year, well, uh, you can prove me wrong, okay? <laughs> uh, but it's, all the bullet points are there. You're holding it for 30 to 40. Again, if you can progress and go do less, uh, do two or three sets. And then we move on to our next stretch. Oh yes, this is good for the hammies and the ankles. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I can't touch my toes. <laughs> it was hard for me to say that. That's why I hesitated a little bit, guys. So that's all right. I go out about to my knee, <laughs> and that's all right. I feel it. So let's say ideally you want to have your your legs out spread out comfortably as far as you can. Um, believe it or not, in the perfect 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 flexibility world, if you could take both those legs and bring them almost way out, not so much V as almost in a line, that's not going to happen. Now don't prove me wrong on that one. Don't try it. You'll you'll definitely have some hamstring strains. But uh, this athlete, and most distance runners are a little tight. He does a really good job, I think, of holding. Uh, I mean, he could actually be all the way up with his head up and not leaning forward and with his arms all the way up, touching his toes. But this is where he's at. And I, I'm going to cheat a little bit. He's cheating a little bit. Um, 
He's not perfect, but you know, he's touching his toes, doing a good job. So you want to cheat a little bit because this is so hard to get there, or you want to just bring your, your arms out, maybe not touching your toes, but maybe just beyond your knees or whatever it is for you. Cool. And then just get better at it and get better at it. And uh, again, we see the drill here, you know, holding it 30 to 40 seconds. Um, and you will feel the hammies. Let's not overstretch. Uh, what is overstretch? You might, might not even know what that means. Let's feel it, but let's not kill it. Let's keep the pain. If 10 is like killer, let's run maybe, maybe we're more on a four or five so we don't overstretch. And then as you get more flexible, maybe you, you crank it a little bit more, you know, as your body gets uh, calloused for, uh, for all of these stretches for that matter. Next slide. Oh yeah, we're, I can tell we're getting close to ending the series of our, of our stretches here. Uh, again, glutes and the groin, uh, are, which are common in distance running. Uh, lay on your back, leg straight, bullet number one here. Uh, and then bring one leg uh, towards your chest like the slide is showing you with your knee bent. Everything looks straight. And then what you're gonna do is uh, hold your leg by locking your hands together just below the knee and then pull down and forward and let's be somewhat gentle if you haven't done a lot of stretching let's be a little gentle maybe the pain if you feel a little bit of pain let's call it a four let's go medium let's not go beyond that and then obviously uh, you're going to uh, switch to the other leg do the same thing and your uh, veterans can go 30 to 40. Rookies are maybe going to go 10 or 15 seconds. And there you go. Next slide. Oh, yes. This is fun. This is a real fun one. Um, again, we're working on the hammies, the Achilles tendon, and the calf. And uh, good slides. Um, obviously, if you look at slide one, we're bringing that uh, knee to the chest. And grabbing the thigh under the knee. The picture shows it. Slowly raise the leg as straight as possible. Now in the perp, yeah, you, you, very good. And bring it back down to the starting position. Here's the deal. It's all good. Uh, in the first uh, three slides, all you're doing is bringing the leg up and bringing it down. Bringing the leg up and bringing it down. You're not doing like slide four. Four comes later. So we might do 10 of those up, slide one, two, three, to that, through that position there. And then uh, once you've done, let's say 10 of those ups and downs, kind of warming up the hammy, then you can grab your toes. Now this uh, slide is showing the guy, uh, the, our uh, uh, model here, uh, grabbing it, and then and in the perfect world, if he could be back on his back, uh, that would be cool with the leg straight. That would be cool. But we all know that we're not maybe there yet, so maybe we have to do a little – I don't want to use the word cheating. We're doing some adjustments until you get really, really uh, comfortable with this. And uh, and you might even have to eh, – maybe the, maybe the leg's not so super straight initially. Maybe it's bent a little bit. Uh, as you graduate, the, that can get better, of course. So what about that fourth slide? Uh, you're holding that for, you know, rookies, maybe 10 or, 10 or 15 seconds. Veterans, we can, we can roll up to 40. But you notice it's a 90-degree angle. Grab the toes with the opposite hand. Try to straighten your uh, uh, raised leg as much as possible. <laughs> and in the perfect world, put your, put your back on the ground. But, hey, this runner, and this, this model here was an All-American in college. And he was a really good high school runner. Now he's a high school coach. Pretty good. Okay, next slide. Looks like we're getting ready to end it. This is uh, this is the way we close it off. Uh, our stretching. Um, and it talks again about your hammy and and, and your shoulders and uh, what what it does for those. So, so there's what nine slides here. Pretty easy to see the flow. You start by touching your uh, uh, toes and then get ready to roll 
back. Slide four actually shows you, the, your legs are now going over your buttocks and getting ready to go over your head. Okay, through slide five. In the perfect world, it would be nice to have your legs straight uh, way back in, uh, uh, in slide five. They're a little bit, uh, well, he's, he's, it's just a little more difficult for him, uh, which would be very difficult for me too, so don't feel bad. But doing your best you can here. You notice that slide six, you start to go down, seven down, eight back to that uh, near, uh, near position, uh, slide one, and obviously slide uh, nine is a replica of, of slide one. So it's a really cool one. Again, start, uh, you're, you're, you're stretching your, your hammy, you're getting ready to roll back and bring your legs all the way over behind you. And then you're bringing it back down and holding your hammy again. And you might do that. Uh, you notice it's saying holding these for two to three seconds. Uh, and you might do this 10 times. Um, I know Nate might even say, well, coach, what about if I have a bad back? Now, any of these stretches where you're going to be torquing your back or you already have an injury, you have a hamstring injury, you have an Achilles injury, whatever it may be. You know, these are these drills, these stretching exercises are really all about you're 100% healthy. And you really don't want to do these when you're hurt. You want to do these when you're healthy and you do them gently and progressively. And from here, then hopefully it'll help you be more agile and, and, and more, it creates a little more, and if you're more agile, you're going to have better form and hopefully it keeps you more pain injury free which then gives you more consistency in your in your running training which is what it's all about some kid asked me the other day he says a recruit he says what's the most important thing you think about running you know what i told the kid i said consistency being healthy it's more than the mileage because if you do the mileage and you're not healthy then it's not doing you any good so what can you do uh, uh, to stay healthy and consistent so you can be racing at your best? And I think the stretching routine, if you don't have one, is really, really good. And I thank my friends from Oregon uh, for teaching me this and bringing it back to my high school teams at Mead, bringing them to camps all over the United States, uh, and certainly bringing it to Centrowitz Camp uh, over on the marvelous campus uh, over there at uh, Portsmouth Abbey uh, near Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, you know, I would love to be uh, live sometime during the week. I don't know if we're going to be able to do stuff like that, but hey, if you have any questions, come to camp next summer. <laughs> I'll be there. Believe it or not, it's only a year away. So, uh, Remember, you can be in any age to go to the camp. It's not a college-related uh, camp. It's a central wits camp. And thank you, Nate, for letting me uh, share a stretching routine that can take about 20 minutes of your time. And I think the one thing I want to add to that, and thank you, Coach, I think as we've been running so much on our own, this is an area, as for myself, I know that I've had to work at to give myself that extra time at the end to feel that stretch. Um, I'll show so I think it's worth you incorporating this into your routine after you run. It's just as important as your run. Is this, like Coach was talking about, that agility to stay healthy and stay injury-free, to be consistent. Coach, you want to say a little bit about your book there? Yeah, I'm not trying to promote it, but it has all the pictures in it. It's pretty cool. Uh, some of my mead guys. Uh, and uh, But it's called Coaching Cross-Country Successfully. It's a boring title. But uh, it, it tells you a little bit about me as a coach. And we certainly uh, put those drills in there. Put my our core drills in there, too, and some lifting and push-up drills. And, yeah, I can't – by the way, those returning campers who are watching this, don't forget to end your, your core or your stretching today with some core and then wrap it up with the Tyson push-ups, slow-mos. <laughs> you heard me, slow-mos. Yeah, they love the slow-mos. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nate. All right. Thank you, Coach.